getting ready for a quick turnaround here versus a good Nebraska team that's one on the road at uh, uh, top 10 Creighton team and um, had some other really good wins, obviously, over time with Purdue. Um, so quick turnaround for them here after uh, last, uh, yesterday afternoon's game. No injury uh, updates really on of, of significance. Um, I know every offseason you, you self-scout and you, you kind of go over things that have happened the year before, try to learn from it. Um, you've had losing streaks like this before. Do you take common, are there common things you've seen as you've examined some of those ones in the past? Or is it, I know every team is different, situations are different, but are there common things you can learn from the past ones that help you now? Um, you know, I don't, I don't ne not necessarily, other than, you know, you're, you're playing in a really good league. Um, you know, we looked at it a couple years ago uh, after, um, you know, we struggled in, in January. Um, but, you know, we've also um, been really good in January last year and, and struggled late. Um, and we've had times where we've um, been really good late and, and struggled. So I think, uh, I don't know if there's a specific pattern or factors other than we just need to play better. You, 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 I think you use the phrase like seeing the forest for the trees or something like that on your radio show when it comes to like talking to other coaches and things like that when you're going through this. Uh, can you shed some light into what it is like to try to keep everybody together and try to keep everything pointed in the same page when you are going through a tough stretch like this? Well, I think that really, te it, you know, like anything, it tests the character of your group and uh, the resilience of your group. You know, that gets tested in these moments. Uh, we'll see how we respond. Obviously, it's a significant uh, remainder of the Big Ten uh, season to go. Um, there's a lot in front of us. Uh, I think your your leadership, your resilience, the tough-mindedness of your group gets tested. Um, and again, that's the case for you know a lot of teams around the country uh, and a lot of teams in uh, leagues where there's just a lot of good teams. Coach, the fact that all these, these these losses have been so close, you've been in every game, how much can that be a silver lining, or does that just add to the frustration of this? I don't know if it does uh, either, Griffin, as much as uh, it just uh, challenges you to, to find ways to be a few possessions better um, in areas each half. I think that's, you know, certainly if we were getting blown out, I think, you know, um, you'd have uh, maybe more cause for concern because that would be, uh, more of an indictment on the number of possessions you've lost in each half, but um, uh, neither feels very good. And then I know the the Minnesota game you called it you guys' is, you know poorest offensive performance. Um, yeah. Obviously, Rutgers is one of the best defenses in the country, but uh, an, an even worse shooting performance um, yesterday. And now, are you seeing commonalities or, or things you need to adjust to make sure that that doesn't become a trend going forward? I think we've got <coughs> we've got to um, make better paint decisions. We've got to see the open man quicker and better and make cleaner reads in those situations uh, when we've created a help situation. I think that's the biggest thing for us right now. Chris, early in the second half, um, there was a sequence of events where it looked like Rutgers blocked a shot and it went <clears> off the rim and then maybe Zed pulled it down and hit the rim again. Yeah. Shot clock didn't reset and on the broadcast, they never really gave any kind of explanation as to why. Um, yeah. From your spot, what did they tell you there? Uh, to be honest with you, it was hard to understand what, what the official was, was saying. Uh, Rob explained it to me, but I, I, didn't, I didn't quite get his, maybe it's just the, the craziness of the moment. I didn't quite get his explanation, to be honest with you. So um, I wasn't going to win that argument, so we just moved on. And then unrelated to uh, on Bryce's final shot, and on the radio you said Eller liked him to maybe kill a couple more seconds. When you practice that at practice on a final possession, is there like a certain time when you're like this is when you take the shot or is it dependent on the shot that you're going to get because it set Rutgers up for it not did. a bad look it did yeah it sure did um about like the the, the Carolina game timing is is what we prefer um at North Carolina when he caught it at the at the elbow and I think he shot it with like maybe three or four that's typically what we told told our guys um seen him make that shot a number of times um he did not have their best defender on him. It's a good defender, but not their best defender. They've gotten switched in transition. And um, uh, they're really good um, at guarding actions as well as blowing up certain actions. So 
Um, he did a great job creating some separation. He really created separation with the move that we've seen him make a number of times. Um, just a simple cross and getting to his left. I think he probably just rushed it a little bit. Uh, we'll help him with that. Um, that's, that's, a, that's a big moment for a freshman. He's been in, been in a number of those, but uh, whether it's him or whether it's somebody else, uh, I'm not always gonna call a timeout in that situation. Um, we just need to help our guys in terms of making sure they take it with a few less seconds on the clock. Chris, now that you've had a little bit of time to look back, what do you think of the starting five you, you rolled with and what were the positives and maybe some of the negatives with that five? Uh, you know, obviously we had trouble scoring uh, there in the first four minutes. Uh, some of that was on us, some of that was on them, but I thought defensively we set a tone, uh, which was good. But, uh, you know, I think we have a number of guys that can start. So I don't know that that's the lineup we'll stick with or change. It's, you know, I think we have a number of guys that are going to play in that sweet spot at 20 to 28 minutes, <laughs> like starter type minutes. And, you know, those two guys were a part of that. And then second overtime game of the season, what kind of things did you see different from the UNC game? Were there similarities? Did you feel like it was a, a different performance or things that you got better at or worse? Um, you know, I liked um, I liked where we got the ball on a couple occasions, to be honest with you, uh, both in regulation and end of game. And I really do trust that our guys will finish some of those plays. Um, you know, I, don't, I don't remember all the quality of possessions in the, in the Carolina game, but I, you know, I felt like this one was, um, you know, was certainly um, more within our reach. Uh, just looking at the stats uh, from the last two games, uh, ordinarily you might get two or three shots blocked per game, but it was six against Minnesota and eight yesterday in the game against uh, Rutgers. I know they're a great defensive team and have. Amore, yep. um, I don't know, just what's your thought about uh, maybe the decision making and, and, and you want guys to be aggressive, but there's a fine line to that when you're going against guys that can reject it pretty easily, I suppose. Yeah, we have to make better paint decisions. We have to make better paint decisions than, than what we're doing right now. We've got to be able to find and see uh, the open guy and see the kick out um, and then maybe the one more um, we just have to get we have to get better uh, at that than what we've been. You know, we've always been a, a pretty heavy uh, dribble drive team um, uh, this year, and, and certainly sometimes in years past. Um, you know, that allows us to get to the free throw line. It allows us to get to the paint, um, but our it also puts a premium on good paint decisions, and that's where a guy like EJ really grew in his last year. His his ability to make paint reads paint decisions, see help, and then deliver the ball on, on time, on target. Uh, and I think that's just where some, some of our guys have to grow. They're good at, they've, they've done a good job at creating help, but they've got to make better reads. Watching Justice, you feel like you, you almost sense his frustration at times that he's not getting the result out of it from the work or whatever he's putting into it at times. Just uh, what can you do? Is, is this a case of a guy who didn't play last year and now halfway through the season, he, he could be hitting a wall of some sort, I don't know, but uh, just seems like uh, he's a guy you depend on so much and that yeah. he maybe he's pressing a little bit to, to just try and get you guys over the hump. I don't know what, that might what do you be part see with of it. him. Yeah, I think that might be part of it. I think there could be some of that with him. Um, you know, I think Justice has to make sure that he's controlling what he can control in terms of his attention to detail, his effort. Um, He's not, he can't control if he's gonna make every shot, uh, I, but he can. there are things that he can control, his his leadership out on the floor, and that's really what we're challenging him with. He's, he's done a pretty good job getting to his spots. Um, I think he is probably frustrated with a couple um, missed opportunities he's had, but uh, he'll respond. You mentioned early in the year quite a bit about how the freshmen and their progression would, would give you guys kind of your ceiling. But in a situation like this, when you're having tough times, how much do you have to lean more on the veterans, whether it be guys that have been in the program or some of the transfer guys that have been around college basketball? Um, you know, I, I think it's, um, you certainly need your leadership in this moment. You know, I think, you, you, you know, we're gonna need them, we're gonna need them the rest of the way. Um, 
uh, I think January, February, your leadership really gets defined. And I'm not putting all the responsibility on them, but I think it's going to be really critical for uh, for those guys and the older guys um, to be able to, to lead in ways that good leaders lead. They control things in the locker room. Uh, they limit distractions. They bring perspective. Uh, they have poise in the midst of, of challenging moments. Uh, they communicate, they play for each other, they lead the way in playing for each other, uh, they lead the way in their unselfishness, uh, they play for Ohio State, they come to work, they're everyday guys, that's what uh, is going to be needed in these moments, and I think uh, that's the challenge in front of those guys. Chris, in this particular episode, are you, do you find yourself being the stay the course guy, or hey, we need to shake something up here because you're close? And all you need is this one of those things where if we win a game, we'll be back to where we were. Yeah, Clay, I don't know if I look at it quite like that as much as um, I don't know if you ever feel, you know, back in a league like this yeah. that is so challenging. I, I think um, you, you're, you're really just focused on how we're performing. Um, are we performing better? Uh, from game to game or, or half to half. And there are gonna be some outliers there. Um, um, you know, we performed really well against Northwestern. We, we really struggled against Minnesota. But I think the, um, the reality is you're looking for over time, are we, are we showing improvements? And if there's areas that, that there's slippage in, we have to make those corrective measures. So um, you're certainly looking strategically at are, are there some things we need to change? Are there adjustments to how we do things um, uh, schematically or um, personnel adjustments? Um, but more than anything, you're looking at are we doing the things that we've been practicing better? Uh, and if we're not, we need to we need to figure out why. I know you said no real injury updates, but you mentioned on the radio uh, Bruce going through wrist. Yeah. Issues. Just how much has that affected him, and how long has he been dealing with? This? I think it's affected him a little bit. Um, I, I do think it has affected him a little bit. Um, um, you know, he injured it in practice, and then you know, if you go back and you watch the game the other day, uh, the last possession, defensive possession of regulation, I mean, he just got slammed into a body. Um, uh, and I think he, he, he re-injured a little bit in, in that particular play, but he's a really tough kid. I will really respond. Chris, you talked about the importance of leadership in this moment. Um, have you seen anybody in the locker room sort of take that initiative to uh, be a leader in these type of rough stretches? Yeah, I mean, I think our captains are, are, are doing justice leading the way with that is, is growing into that role. But again, that's going to continue to get tested here um, these, these uh, last several weeks. So... Um, you know, that story's still being written. Right, and you talk about the importance of taking what you're doing in practice and translating that to the game and doing that right. What are those things that you're doing in practice that you want to see translated to the game um, just in these coming games? Everything we've, we've talked about in terms of, um, you know, if you're being asked to block out, you need to block out. you got to pursue the ball. you got to be able to be... Um, in the 50 spot defensively, a pass away. You got to be, if you're supposed to be at the MIG, you got to be at the MIG. We need to have great effort and communication defensively and great communication and transition. I think the ball has to move better offensively. We've got to be able to make better paint decisions. If you're supposed to go to the offensive glass, you got to do that. All those things are what we're looking for.